By 2029, sodium ion batteries will be less efficient. It's like a secret recipe with tweaks. This isn't a technology that is exclusive to sodium ion batteries. Hello everyone, I'm Era. Let's discuss the leading battery manufacturer. That's right, CATL from China. They've held a special battery day event. Our nation excels in producing high quality NCM or ternary batteries. However, by 2023, CATL had captured about 40% of the global market share with all their products, marking them as a leading player. As someone who supports our country, CATL's dominance in China is frustrating. However, their tech day showed impressive innovations. They have made advancements. These could threaten our battery companies. It is not just about price. Their technology is also a challenge. Now, Naturally, since it's tech day, we can't expect these innovations to be mass-produced right away. However, our media has been very attentive. They talked about various topics, including the charging speed of LFP batteries. However, the media focused on their next-gen sodium-ion battery, Nextra. Robin Zeng, a co-founder of CATL, was involved in this. He mentioned that sodium-ion batteries could advance beyond solid-state ones. I might use different words. But since the media calls it a sodium-ion battery, I will stick with sodium. He said that the sodium-ion battery has the potential to become a next-generation technology, possibly replacing up to half of the current lithium-based market. When we talk about lithium-ion batteries, we mean NCM batteries. These are a major focus here. NCA batteries are also becoming popular. CATL in China is leading here too. Even LFP batteries might be replaced by up to half, as mentioned. Why are they pushing sodium-ion batteries in markets where they're already well-established? Is the technology behind these batteries really that exceptional? Clearly, they have made remarkable progress, and they are notably resistant to explosions even under stress. Our media has been very focused on this. However, there's something even more surprising. The reason this new sodium ion battery is drawing so much attention is that its energy density, which was initially quite low, has been greatly enhanced. Significant advancements have been made in technology that allows for a higher energy density, meaning more energy can be stored in the same size and weight. It is important to note that this innovation is not limited to sodium ion batteries. This technology also works for lithium ion batteries. That makes it even more significant. Today, we're not just focusing on sodium ion batteries. We'll delve into the technology behind this advancement and explore how it can be applied universally, potentially boosting energy density in nickel cobalt manganese batteries as well. Let's dive in. During tech day, the real surprise was that the demonstration wasn't live. It was presented via video. Even under firm pressure, it doesn't explode. This is about today's sodium ion batteries. Even when pressed down, they show no issues. They illustrated this by connecting a bulb, and even after slicing through the battery, the bulb remarkably remained illuminated. They connected a wire to the cut on the right. This showed the remaining parts were blocked. They often drill through like this. Drilling is a focus for BYD and CATL in the battery market. BYD, known for challenging Tesla, released a similar video. What you see here is an NCM battery. Drilling an NCM lithium battery causes a fire. Their LFP battery is very thin. It's called a blade battery. They made it extremely thin. Even when drilled, it shows no issues. They demonstrated the voltage drop and other features. They're emphasizing the safety of their LFP battery, and it looks like they've demonstrated that the new Nextra sodium ion battery is also safe. We'll only know if it really catches fire when drilled or cut once the product is out. Theoretically, sodium ion batteries, especially sodium ion batteries, have a lower risk of catching fire compared to typical lithium ion ion batteries. We need to compare sodium ion batteries with others. This will show their strengths and weaknesses. The biggest advantage of sodium ion batteries is their potential for mass production at a cost significantly lower than existing nickel cobalt manganese or nickel manganese cobalt batteries, and even cheaper than lithium iron phosphate batteries. The cathode materials and material costs make up more than half of the total cost, which applies to both types of batteries. Meanwhile, the raw material costs for MMC and LFP batteries can be significantly lower. So keep in mind that sodium ion batteries have the major advantage of being very cost-effective to produce as we delve further into the topic. We are now discussing how quickly next-generation batteries are being developed. Starting from the year 2010, we have been closely monitoring advancements up to 2024, and it is evident that sodium-ion batteries have shown the most significant growth. Other technologies like vanadium have seen ups and downs, but sodium-ion batteries are rapidly advancing, gaining attention in both academia and industry. Sodium-ion batteries matter a lot to Korean companies. Startups are being bought to secure this technology quickly. CATL plans to start mass production now. Looking forward to 2024, the cost per energy unit for lithium ion and sodium ion batteries is expected to be about the same. However, as we move forward with mass production, we expect the cost to drop significantly. By 2019, lithium ion battery costs will be one third. Currently, costs might drop. However, data shows big improvements over time. This is a prediction, so it might not be exact. Sodium ion batteries could compete with others like vanadium in cost per energy unit. In 2018, the dotted line represents $50. Other batteries cost over $50. Sodium ion batteries 
batteries might drop to $25. They could even reach $10. To achieve such low costs for sodium ion batteries, we must see if they can be efficiently mass produced. I will also cover their downsides, which I will summarize today. Let's define sodium ion batteries. We also have lithium ion batteries. We've talked about this on Ande Bongwa before. Batteries include parts like the cathode and anode. They also have the electrolyte and separator. We have added the current collector to the cell. But here is the main point. Lithium ions move between the cathode and anode. They release electrons. These electrons generate energy. That's how a lithium ion battery works. A sodium ion battery, on the other hand, uses sodium ions instead of lithium ions. Sodium ions move from the cathode to the anode during charging. They stay there. When discharging, they return to the cathode. This movement generates electricity. The energy generation process is similar to lithium ion batteries. Recently, there's talk about the United States and others securing lithium. This is causing some tension. Lithium is often regarded as a rare and valuable resource. However, sodium is abundantly available in seawater. Sodium is over 500 times more plentiful than lithium, so we don't have to worry about resource conflicts with other countries. Remember learning the periodic table in high school? Oh, some of you might not know this. The periodic table groups elements with similar properties in columns. That's how we memorized it. While everyone has their own method, I personally remembered it in this way. Li, B, B, C, No, O, F, Ni, Na, M, G, Al, Si, P, S, Kel, R, and so on. Haha. <laughs> Here, you'll notice that lithium, sodium, and potassium belong to the same group. They have similar characteristics, although they increase in size as you move down the group. Therefore, lithium and sodium share fundamental similarities. However, when examining lithium ion batteries, sodium ions are much larger. In terms of radius, they are physically bigger than lithium ions. Lithium ions are 76 picometers. Sodium ions are 100 picometers. They are 40% bigger. This creates a problem. Whether it's a lithium ion or sodium ion battery, ions must be stored in the anode. They need to be stored there and released during discharge. I've mentioned before that graphite is the common anode material. We utilize both natural and synthetic graphite, but what's crucial is that graphite has a layered structure, allowing lithium ions to nestle between these layers. Sodium ions can also accomplish this. However, because sodium ions are physically larger, it is much harder for them to fit in and come back out. Think of it like a parking lot with both narrow and wide spaces. When you drive a compact car like a Tico or Matisse, slipping into tight parking spots is relatively easy. However, sodium ions are like maneuvering a much larger vehicle, such as a Palisade or Carnival, making it tough to get in and out of those cramped spaces. This is exactly why a different anode material is essential. Due to the difficulty sodium ions face in entering and exiting graphite, sodium ion batteries typically employ hard carbon or titanium-based oxides as alternatives. They're using an anode material with layers. It's designed to store sodium ions well. Here's another point. Lithium and sodium have similar properties on the periodic table. However, their electrochemical potentials differ. Sodium ions are larger. They have higher electrode potential than lithium. What does this mean? Sodium has a lower operating voltage, meaning that a sodium ion battery's cell operates at about 0.3 volts less than that of a lithium ion battery. Think of it like this. If the water pressure is low, the force to push water out is weaker. Similarly, lithium has a stronger pressure, while sodium's is weaker. So, even if you want to push out more energy, Sodium provides less energy than lithium. This is a drawback of sodium ion batteries. However, sodium is less reactive, which reduces the likelihood of side reactions with electrolytes and other components, thereby lowering the risk of thermal runaway or fires. This makes sodium ion batteries safer, which is a major benefit. These characteristics are all due to the properties of sodium and its ions. This discussion leads us to consider a phenomenon known as dendrites, which are needle-like structures that can develop on the anode within lithium ion batteries over time. Dendrites can break through the separator. This creates a short circuit between anode anode and cathode, it might cause violent reactions. Older batteries face a higher risk. Managing these issues is vital in battery technology. Earlier, I mentioned the anode's current collector. For sodium, the current collector does not form an alloy with aluminum. They typically use a lot of aluminum. In lithium ion batteries, copper foil is crucial as the anode's current collector. With sodium ion batteries, aluminum can replace copper. This substitution reduces costs. I will soon explain why I brought up dendrites. In essence, sodium ion batteries operate in a similar way, but they utilize sodium as the cathode material instead of lithium which makes them more cost-effective. Instead of using graphite, they opt for more durable carbon materials, or in CATL's innovative method, they completely eliminate the use of graphite. This method reduces costs. You can use aluminum instead of copper for the whole structure. These elements make it cheaper. When you compare NCM and LFP batteries to other types, you'll find that sodium ion batteries are much more affordable. Sure, discharge batteries are cheaper, but sodium ion batteries are much cheaper than NCM or LFP batteries for mass production. They are also the safest. This is because of their directional stability. They perform well,
well even in extremely cold conditions. They claim it works at minus 40 degrees Celsius. This is theoretically true. LFP batteries struggle in low temperatures, unlike sodium ion batteries. These can replace them and have much better cycle characteristics. However, when compared to NCM batteries, their energy density still falls short. Sodium ion batteries cannot fully replace NCM batteries. CATL is also successful with NCM batteries. There are quality controversies, but replacing NCM batteries entirely seems tough. LFP batteries were once seen as unfit for cars, but China developed them and opened the market. Sodium ion batteries now have better energy density than lithium iron phosphate batteries. CATL's latest announcement shows they are on par with lithium iron phosphate batteries. LFP batteries were once thought to never replace NCM batteries. This was especially true for cars. LFP batteries have captured the market. Sodium ion batteries might replace them too. They work well in vehicles. They are also good for energy storage systems. There is a high demand for batteries in wind power and renewables. Sodium ion batteries might soon replace the current options in these sectors. CATL's Nextara battery is a major innovation. It boosts energy density significantly. Sodium ion batteries usually have 150 watt hours per kilogram. This first generation reaches 160 watt hours per kilogram. Now they say it's 175 watt hours per kilogram. By the end of the year, they plan to exceed 200 watt hours per kilogram. Could this be just a claim? Maybe. I conducted thorough research. I found a paper previously published in China. This could outdo LFP batteries. Their range is 160 to 170 watt hours per kilogram. It would stay stable. And with a lower cost, LFP batteries might actually become obsolete in a short period. There are also NCM batteries. Korea is working on types like 911 or 811. These batteries have about 300 watt hours per kilogram. Sodium ion batteries even at 200 are less dense. Even LFP batteries, which have lower density, are used in electric vehicles now. From a market standpoint, this could be seen as a potential challenge. I delved into several research papers, and although Tech Day didn't disclose specific details, the sodium ion batteries concept closely matches the principles outlined in this paper. The paper's title on sodium ion batteries is quite telling. They aim to reach over 200 watt hours per kilogram. This study by Chinese authors was published in Nature Energy. The research involved several Chinese institutions. These included the Institute of Physics and the University of Chinese Academy of Sciences. Hu Yongheng was the lead researcher. Professor Hu Yongheng has started a new company called Hina Battery. Observing that this company is advancing this technology, it's plausible that CATL is undertaking a similar initiative. The main takeaway here is this. They developed this without using carbon graphite for the anode. This is called anode-free technology. It seems they developed a battery without an anode. Typically, when charging, the ions would fit into the graphite structure. Sodium ion batteries cannot use the graphite found in traditional lithium ion batteries. Instead, they often use hard carbon. But in this case, they have removed graphite entirely, creating more space. So, with more space available, they can fit a lot more sodium ions, which increases the energy density. But how do they stack without graphite? They arrange themselves neatly on the aluminum current collector. When charging, sodium ions naturally form layers on the current collector's surface. This method isn't new since sodium ion batteries have been been researched for a long time. So the stacking method itself isn't surprising. But the problem is the dendrites I showed you earlier. If sodium ions stack well on the anode side, that's ideal. But some grow long and sharp, piercing the layers. That's the issue. The innovation here is that they can stack neatly without forming those problematic dendrites. The paper highlights how sodium ions are able to stack in a very orderly manner. To address the issue of dendrites, they have employed a coating technique on the electrode surface. This coating effectively prevents the sodium from forming those irregular and sharp dendrite structures. In their presentation, they mentioned nanotechnology. I think it's related to this. That's just my guess. They are not claiming to have used it yet, but they are exploring boron compounds in the electrolyte. This could prevent dendrite formation. It might allow them to skip graphite. Then direct accumulation would be possible. By doing this, they found that they could increase the voltage, reaching up to 205 volts. In this paper, they discuss both sodium ion and lithium ion batteries, dividing them into sections typically called AB battery packs. They use a dual core setup. Different battery types are separated. They adjust each based on its traits. This method was also shown. The BMS can disable the LFP battery in cold conditions, allowing another type to take over, which helps prolong the battery's lifespan. I'm mentioning this because the paper talked about using this structure. This technology isn't limited to just sodium ion batteries. Initially, sodium ions tend to cluster together, and by applying a similar approach to other batteries like lithium ion, there's potential to greatly enhance energy density. However, sodium ion batteries have clear limitations, as their energy density maxes out at around 200. Although its energy density is about 30% lower than NCM batteries, its cost-effectiveness presents considerable market opportunities. This means it can capture a share of the ESS market. It might even play a role in the electric vehicle market. However, ternary battery costs are steadily decreasing. Lithium prices have dropped sharply. They fell by 70% in three years. In this context, sodium ion batteries need to achieve economies of scale. They maintain 90% stability, even at lower temperatures. More importantly, they use a node-free technology that eliminates graphite completely. If this technology is used not only in sodium ion batteries, but also others, CATL might have a way to boost energy density in ternary and LFP batteries. Yet, 
yet, since mass production hasn't begun, we'll need to monitor the situation. By implementing this anode technology that produces sodium ions without using graphite across different systems, sodium ion batteries are expected to achieve greater energy density, particularly in terms of volume. They aim for 350 watt hours per liter. LFP batteries range from 380 to 780 watt hours per liter. Ternary batteries might reach 1000 watt hours per liter. Stay tuned for updates. Ternary batteries have 300 energy density per kilogram. LFP batteries are at 160. We focus on energy density per liter. They stress volume. Why is that? It's because removing graphite from the anode material provides a volume advantage. We should focus on CATL's announcement. It hints at wide-ranging uses for this technology. In our country, we're at the forefront of battery technology. CATL, the world's largest company, is driving these innovations. We're well prepared, and there's a growing interest in sodium ion batteries, which seem poised to initially capture the LFP market. Although we've been slower to enter the LFP market, we may need to focus more on sodium ion batteries. Using BMS to quickly mix and operate different batteries is another method. The technology is important from an engineering view. Even if the tech isn't great, market demand can lead to commercialization. This happened with LFP batteries. We need to focus on these aspects. I've summarized them from different angles. There's a lot more to cover. I had to keep it brief. Some parts might seem short. I'd love your feedback. Please share your comments. Finally, we're selling merchandise like hoodies, t-shirts, desk pads, and tape at the Andiomax store. Many of you have already bought them. We ensured great quality, so please take an interest. We're also sharing updates on Instagram at unrealtech.error. We also offer short video summaries along with news updates, so be sure to check those out as well. This is Error, signing off for now.